Oh, excuse me, little dog. Oh, hi, guys. It is another gloomy, stormy day here in the end times in paradise on the second to the last day of summer 2018. That would be Thursday, September 20th, 2018, here in Garfield, Texas, as I wait for a tree to fall on my house or whatever's getting ready to happen in Ambo's life now, but uh, meanwhile, I just sitting here doing what I do pretty much every day, uh, since I have nothing better to do with my life than to go on to the mainstream media to bring you part two of today's Doomer Headlines Roundup rant, where we're just going to do a little flop some and jet some of some mainstream media news stories out today that uh, you know show how fucked this planet is with no help from climate change. So we're going to start out with a couple of pieces of good news from the mainstream media. We're going to start right here in the shithole state of North Dakota. All right. <coughs> Massive 2013 oil spill in North Dakota finally cleaned up. Five years and almost $100 million later, cleanup is complete on a massive oil pipeline leak in North Dakota that has been called one of the biggest onshore oil spills in U.S. history, industry and state officials said on Wednesday. Industry and state officials said on Wednesday. Okay, as long as we're talking about good news from oil, let's go over there to the shithole country of Indonesia where finally it's right here in the mainstream media so it's got to be true. We have some good news on the palm oil front in Indonesia. You know, this is the same Indonesia, uh, the same Indonesian president Joko Widodo. This, this guy's name is literally Joko Widodo. Uh, if, there, if there is a name, if there is any name that inspires confidence on this planet, it would be Joko Widodo. Uh, he is the same guy who a few weeks ago made it a national law in his country that uh, cars in Indonesia had to run off of biofuels made from palm oil. Okay, it is that Joko Widodo. But anyway, Joko is now saving the planet. Indonesia halts, halts new palm oil plantation development. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Yes. Take it away, Jojo. Jo jo I mean, Dodo with Joko or whatever name it is. All right. Indonesia's president has signed a moratorium on all new palm oil plantation plantation development. A government official said today in a move. Hailed, hailed by environmentalists. The moratorium affects any new land, any new land being made available for oil palm plantations in the world's top producer of the oil, a key ingredient in many everyday woods. Yes. Uh, so, what did Joko have to say to explain his decision? Quote, the moratorium is to improve the governance of sustainable palm oil plantations. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. 
blah, 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 to maintain environmental sustainability and contribute to the reductions of greenhouse gases. Yes, in case you're unaware of this, plantations uh, in Indonesia on Sumatra, and Sumatra, Papua, and the Indonesian part of Borneo have expanded in recent years as demand for palm oil has skyrocketed, bringing huge profits to companies, including the palm oil companies that put Joko in office and healthy tax revenues to the government. Hmm, but the rapid growth has been blamed for the destruction of tropical forests that are home to many endangered species and forest fires that occur every year due to illegal slash and burn clearance. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, from Joko Widodo saving the planet. Uh, let's move over finally. Uh, we can trade in the bullshit detector button for the other button. We're going to go over to the uh, shithole Bosnian. Is Bosnia, I guess, it, I don't even know, is Bosnia a country? But of course, what's true for Bosnia uh, is true for every country on this planet. Yeah, but this is HuffPost just zeroing in on one area of the planet with this No Shit Sherlock headline, Horror List of Dams Threaten Some of the World's Last Wild Rivers. No Shit Sherlock. Yes, uh, the Horror List of Dams. So, this is... <clears throat> Just, just, just putting the uh, the spotlight on one country. Uh, well, this is looking at the Balkans, at the Balkans, uh, and the who are all all over the Balkans and all, o all over the planet, I think they're talking at least, at least 30, may this is a long involved article, it's, uh, you know, trying to get an accurate count, I think it's at least 30 of, of these goddamn things uh, will cause besides having a high human cost, but will also cause irreversible environmental damage. The Balkans are home to some of the world's last wild rivers, unique ecosystems that support fish and other wildlife, circulate fresh water, and help drain the Earth's surface. Dams irrevocably change the course and characters of rivers rerouting them or blocking them off entirely in soil erosion from deforestation for dam construction inundates uh, waterways. Uh, quoting uh, Stephen Weiss of Austria's University of Graz, uh, Quote, these projects are in some of the longest and best preserved river stretches in the Balkans and would have immediate consequences for biodiversity, said, uh, said Weiss, who has studied the planned hydroelectric boom. More than a third of the dams currently being constructed are uh, in the, or at are being proposed in the region are located in 
protected areas for rare and threatened species. The river systems were vital, vital for bears, lynx, and wolves. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This, uh, and according to one estimate, one in ten of Europe's endemic fish species would be at the risk of extinction if these dams go ahead. Uh, here's, then they look at all of these different, different rivers, uh, taking, a, just going down. This is a long, involved article. Uh, anyway, but this, of course, is all being done in the name of, uh, you know, this is all, although it doesn't talk about it here, this is all part and parcel of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Caution detected. Take precautions. As the United Nations continues to hold up hydroelectric power as this source of unlimited, clean, green, environmentally responsible energy. Uh, yes, pull your head out of your ass. Uh, it is expected that the green light will be given for development funding for these dams in the fall. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, if passed, the list will open the floodgates for a hydro boom in these countries. Uh, there you go. And, and, and of course, uh, th this is a tiny slice of what is going on all over this planet with these goddamn hydroelectric dams. But let's go from rivers to the bottom of the ocean where we see deep sea robots reveal mineral riches in the abyss. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, from the safety of their research vessel, scientists, meaning scientists working for these planet eaters, are exploring one of the Earth's last frontiers, the seafloor, to discover more about valuable minerals vital in the manufacture of smartphones. This is just the latest way these goddamn smartphones are, are going to be taking down the planet as, as the newest gold rush on the planet opens up all over the bottom of the deepest oceans. And then this is these goddamn planet eaters are 8,000 feet uh, down into the water between Norway and Greenland. Uh, you know, as the ice begins to melt, it's going to open up uh, all sorts of areas to, to this shit. And, and, one of the, and, and one of the main planet eaters joining the rush to the Arctic uh, are, are these goddamn rare earth metals uh, at the bottom of the of the sea's dark depths where zinc, gold, and copper are also found in addition to these rare uh, to these rare metals. Trying to figure out what damage mining them would have on the environment. This is the damage they would have on the environment. Uh, rare earths are a group of 17 elements used in the production of smartphone screens, magnets, camera lenses, and x-ray machines that could be highly lucrative. No shit, 
Oh, God. Uh, I can see where this rant could go on for hours. Let's go to the Bugopolyps here showing up on Associated Press. Bye-bye, bugs. <clears throat> Scientists fear non-pest insects are declining. You know, I was just talking about this, this recently. It seems like any, any insect that is bad for the planet uh, is, is expanding their range while the insects that are good for the planet are, are disappearing off the face of the planet. Okay, take it away. Associated Press, a staple of summer, swarms of bugs seem to be a thing of the past. And that's got scientists worried. Huh, pesky mosquitoes, disease-carrying ticks, crop-munching aphids, and cockroaches are doing just fine. But the more beneficial flying insects of summer, such as native bees, moths, butterflies, ladybugs, lovebugs, mayflies, and fireflies, and now they've added a wasp to this list, appear to be less abundant. Less abundant than they used to be. No shit, Sherlock. Scientists think something is amiss, but they can't be certain because in the past they didn't systematically count the populations of flying insects. So, who the hell knows what the truth is? Uh, nevertheless, they are pretty sure, they are pretty sure that across the globe there are fewer insects that are crucial to as much as 80% of what we eat. No shit, Sherlock. And, uh, and then they talk about, they go into here in this article, uh, starts talking about, you know, how more and more people, uh, you know, talking about how you're seeing less and less bugs being splattered on your windshield and on your headlights and in the and in your radiator. You know, I was just talking to someone recently about how it used to be where, where I grew up in the South is that every couple of weeks in the summer you had to literally spray off your your radiator grill because there were so many bugs they were clogging up your radiator and making your car overheat. Uh, I, I just put 8,000 miles on my truck and uh, never once had to do that. I, I should take this camera out to this spider, this, this huge spider web covering the entire barn door right next to, uh, next to my garden. There is not one insect in this giant spider web. I don't know, it's this big ass spider. I don't know what the hell the spider's eating. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, my camera out there after this rant. But let's just go down a few more hot headlines as the storm of the century blows in again. If it starts pouring down rain, <clears throat> I can't risk my getting my camera wet. So I might have to wrap this up early. All right, let's change gears here a little. Good Lord, I better, oh, here it comes. This is probably the, the uh, hackberry tree getting ready to fall in, on my house. We can probably get that on video. Interaction of chemical slurry in ancient shale in fracking wastewater causes radioactivity. I, I, yes, radioactivity in fracking wastewater comes from the interaction between a chemical slurry and ancient shale during the fracking process. So we can now add radioactive water 
to the uh, list of reasons. Uh, guys, I don't know. It looks like I might have to abandon this uh, this rant. Let's see. Uh, I'm just going to do. Let's do a a couple more. I need to come back to these two stories. Are plant eaters, meaning vegans, smarter and more empathetic than meat eaters? That might be a whole separate rant. And three things we can all learn from people who don't use smartphones or social media. That can be a uh, a separate rant. But we're gonna we're gonna do two more before I hunker down from the uh, from the storm of the century blowing in. All right, as if you're not aware of this, space junk, space junk now presents a clear and present danger. Yes. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Uh, talking about, this is just the latest story, the latest research uh, tracking more than 20,000 satellites, rocket pieces, and collision fragments bigger than a softball that are now orbiting the Earth, which together present a looming menace to satellite operations and everything that depends on them, including global positioning systems, telecommunications, weather forecast, and the internet. Uh, over 50 years ago, when we first started putting satellites in orbit, we seemed small and the Earth very big. Now, with nearly 500 new satellites going up every year, our influence is no longer small. Congested space is another reflection of our entry into the Anthropocene, a new era of history in which everything about the Earth and its climate, even the space around it, is being profoundly affected by human activity. Oh shit, Sherlock. Well, anyway, guys, let me uh, get a little closer to the microphone for this last story from good old NPR. Uh, NPR asking any of us if we have a cool idea to help end world hunger. Pitch it to the UN. Let's figure out how to end hunger forever. And do it fast. That's the lofty goal of the World Food Program's Innovation Accelerator. Yes, which is the UN's attempt to gather an arsenal of ideas to fight hunger. Hmm. Yes. So we are brainstorming for cool ideas to fight hunger. And this is Hambone Little Tales, No Shit Sherlock, cool idea to fight hunger. Why don't we, I know this is a crazy idea, why don't we stop brainstorming about ideas how to approach this from the supply side and instead of figuring out how to feed the soon to be 10 billion people on this planet, why don't we, I know this is a crazy idea, why don't we approach it from the demand side and figure out how to reduce the population of useless eaters on this planet by about 90%. If 90% of the people getting ready to be born 
were never born the cause of a planet-wide uh, birth control operation, shall we say. If, if the demand for food was reduced by 90%, the humans living on the planet, the 500 million or less humans on the planet, wow, would have about 10 times as much food to eat. And that would put an end to global hunger. But uh, speaking of global hunger, uh, I got a couple of factory farmed corn dogs with my name on them and I'm gonna go have my last meal before this uh, let's see how the the cottonwood tree this is the uh, cottonwood tree getting ready to fall on my house here as the storm of the century uh, as the storm of the century builds let's see if we can actually see the uh, the split in this cottonwood tree, this top heavy cottonwood tree. Oh yeah, that's a fine looking tree looming over my house as the 50 mile an hour winds move in to Garfield, Texas. Smoke them if you got them. The big storm approaches. Bye, guys.